welcome back to another video. Today I've got a cute little review for you guys and I slightly mentioned these Artix colored pencils in my favorites video already but I thought I'd do a proper review of them for you guys. So these are the Artix colored pencils 126 colored pack and as you can see they are super cute they come in this very adorable packaging where you can see all the pencils really neatly displayed like this. And this set has a wide range of colors to choose from. These pencils are thick, durable leads, which are basically break resistant or at least more break resistant than normal pencils. And you can stack at least five layers without slipping with these pencils, which you guys will see in this uh, speed draw <laughs> that that is true. So I love layering with pencil. It's one of my favorite methods to color with colored pencils. So these are just perfect for the job. I can layer I'd say even more than five layers uh, if you're like a light sketcher and yeah, this, the colors are so bright, so vivid and they still pop. And as I said, they have a this portable sort of vertical box that keeps the lead safe because you put the pencil tip down in a foam protector, so the foam cushion keeps them safe. So I just did this little sketch here of the drawing I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be showing you how I color this drawing with this, these pencils. This is the 126 set, but Artix also do a 72 color set. So obviously the 126 colors have more mid-tone colors and if you're especially a beginner with colored pencils, it, it, it gives you more avenues to like create gradients and help you blend colors a little bit more easily and just makes your life a lot easier when trying to do color transitions. And the core colors match the barrel colors, which is something that is usually quite frustrating with both pencils and markers is that sometimes you look at the barrel and you're like, that's the color I want. And then you use it and it's a completely different color. But I find that with these pencils, the uh, color matches really good. In the 126 set, each pen has its own holes to hold it. So it's easier to organize them. So the packaging itself is different from the 72 color set and the 126 color. And of course, the 126 set contains all the colors from the 72 color set, plus some more. So I used some light colored flesh tones to sort of just create a base color and a base line art, so to say, for the skin tones. And now I'm using a like sort of reddish dark brown color to do sort of the outline of her hair and the locks and I kind of prefer to do this when co using colored pencils is to create this sort of line art look before going in and actually filling out all the areas. It just makes it easier to actually color within the lines for me and I can more easily distinguish between what I'm actually coloring in because sometimes my sketch is a bit too loose and I get a bit confused over what's what. So once I was happy with the general line art that I did, I started going in with some pops of color and trying to like sort of figure out what color palette I was going to use for this drawing. I didn't really have much of a plan for the drawing once I sat down to film this. I kind of just felt like drawing with colored pencils and this is what came out. I just started picking out some key colors and I like to keep a little swatch whenever I draw with markers and colored pencils. So I'm just keeping a, a log of what colors I'm using over there on the left so I can see which colors are which and which ones I need to go back to. And here I'm just using a really light like flesh tone <laughs> to add color to her face so that then I can blend the shadows and the darker tones into it over the top. As I said, these pencils are super easy to blend with, so it's almost like I kind of almost use my technique when using markers, so I'll kind of start darkening the colors uh, with every layer and blend them together with the base layer, and it works really nice with the pencils just as much as with the markers. So as you can see here, I switched to a darker flesh tone and just started adding in some shadows and adding in this sort of light brown into all the creases and places that would have a shadow cast on them. And the key to blending these colors and just most colors, if I'm honest, with any pencil set is to be light-handed to begin with. 
because it really helps <laughs> with blending colors, first of all, and also it really helps you if you make a mistake. These pencils actually erase really nicely, which I was surprised because the pencil is so pigmented that when I made a mistake later on in the drawing, I had I tried erasing it and it actually erased really nicely. So I, I would say that going light-handed helped, but the pencils are really nice in that aspect as well. Then I started adding some more details like darkening the area around her eyes and the lash line and the deepest crevices near her hair and near her around her face and then I started adding some blushing with a red pencil adding some more reddish areas around the cheeks the nose the lips and just slowly but surely adding color to different areas this is kind of the reason why I really love drawing with colored pencils because you can kind of go back and forth from different areas you don't really have to wait for things to dry and I don't know I just find it really therapeutic to draw with colored pencils and even when I do use wet mediums I always love adding pencils on top of them because I just love the texture that colored pencils give a drawing so even if I haven't used pencils for the main section of the drawing I will I still like adding some of the pencil textures on top. So this is the best of all worlds for me because it's all pencil texture. <laughs> yeah, I just started adding little pops of color here and there and then using the base color that I use, which is like a, a light tan uh, pencil to blend all of these like different colors together. So I like to add in little pops of like blue and yellow and uh, purple here and there because I think it's really nice to add colors that you wouldn't usually see on a portrait onto the skin. I just think it adds these really fun bits of color and if I feel like I've gone too heavy-handed with them again I go in with like the light colored base color to blend them together and it usually creates a nice transition between them. Then I started to add in all of the texture and the colors to the locks in her hair and adding darker line art to them as well to differentiate the different locks. And I do go in with an even darker pencil later on to make even darker line art between them because I feel like once I started adding all this texture to her locks, it just kind of all started blending together. So I went in with a really dark brown pencil to outline the different locks and it, it just, worked like a charm. Like I said, you can layer these pencils over and over again and they really do still come out really vibrant and there's no slipping uh, like with most softcore pencils. I just really like them. I feel like if I need to change my mind on a, an area of the drawing, I can just go over it with a pencil and fix it without any issue. So yeah, it's just really fun to experiment with them. And then I started adding colors to like her jewelry and adding these little pops of yellow here and there, which I think added a really nice contrast to her like really deep blue eyes. Also, I did want to slightly apologize for the severe changes in lighting during this video. I don't know what was happening, but the sun was so powerful at some points in the video and then it just disappeared all of a sudden. So I had to turn on my light. It's been crazy um, here in the studio with lighting recently. So I did my best, <laughs> but I'm sorry if it's very jarring for you. I filmed this in the afternoon as well. So the sunset was very strong that day which was very nice to draw to, but not that great if you're like recording it <laughs> for YouTube. And also wanted to apologize that my head was covering the lens in like 50% of the video. I guess I just got too engrossed in the drawing process and forgot that I was filming. <laughs> so you get to see the back of my head quite a lot. So yeah, I went back in after I got distracted and continued drawing the textures in her hair and adding all the little textures on her locks. And then once I had filled in all of her hair, I started going in with the even darker pencils to again, differentiate all the different shapes and create even more contrast within the hair to really make those shadows in between the different locks and the shadows in on the deepest areas of her hair really stand out.
And at this point, I started adding in the final sort of layers to some of the parts of her face. So like in her lips and her earrings and the areas around her face that I wanted to be really dark. I started being a little bit more heavy handed with the pencils to really get all of that like color onto the paper. And basically finishing that part off. And at this point, I was quite happy with how the face and the hair was starting to look. And then I realized that I had for completely forgotten about her like arms and her body. And I completely neglected those. So I went in and did pretty much the same technique that I used in her face onto her arms and hands and fill those in. So yeah, starting off with a light colored base that I can build color up from there. So then I got onto the hands, started adding all the different shading uh, on the hands and, and stuff and basically making it match the face. <laughs> And slowly but surely, it started to come together and she didn't just look like she had a ghost body. I also went in with a darker brown pencil and started adding in the shadows uh, cast from her locks and her hand, etc. Basically just adding a bit of more of a dramatic shadow to the drawing and making it look really, really cool and moody. And again, as you can see, I went back and forth with some red pencil, some purple, always blending it in with that base sort of pinkish flesh tone to blend them all in and just adding pops of color here and there with this bright cyan blue and a yellow and just making it look a bit more interesting. I feel like if um, I don't add in these little pops of color, it just kind of becomes a bit boring, not just to look at, but also for myself rendering it. I just find it a lot more fun to add in these funny colors here and there. And for this last portion of the drawing, I was just kind of going in darkening the darkest areas of the drawing and creating more contrast wherever I felt it needed it, just to really make the highlights pop. That's like a pro tip. If you ever feel like you've gone a bit heavy handed and there's not enough highlights, the best way I think to, uh, to sort that is to make the darker areas darker and that will in part make the lighter areas pop out. Yeah, that was pretty much it. I decided to then add some little sparkles, of course, uh, to the top area of the drawing just to fill in that sort of area and matched the colors to the pops of color from her eyes and the earrings, just to kind of marry the whole thing together. And that is it for my drawing. It was a really nice session. I was really happy with how it came out. I always have a good time drawing with colored pencils. It's a nice therapeutic activity. Again, these pencils are really great. I've been using them for a few weeks now, actually, even before I recorded this review. So I'm already a big fan of them. They are kind of my go-to at the moment. Uh, they're just really nice to work with and very, very beginner friendly as well. So yeah, if you'd like to check them out, the link for these is down in the description. Don't forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe, maybe even hit the uh, little bell button to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.